wore starched white shirts, button-nothing neck, and he'd sit in shade and watch the chickens peck. And his teeth were gone, but what the heck? I thought that he walked on water. We just old farm people taught us to work. We learned not to run from mom and her little peach tree limbs. She'd just tear your legs up, you know. And Dad used a razor strap in his belt. They didn't cut you much slack. Mom used to do her, her washing in an old uh, black kettle, and they built a fire around it to get the water hot. And I stepped in it one summer day, and I couldn't have been. I was still in diapers for less than two years old. I remember that. I remember we at about the same time we had a three-legged mule. His leg off below his knee, you know, and he hopped. And we, we, we three oldest would ride the mule. Three legged mule, sure did. A lot of this stuff you think you remember, you've heard it over and over and over mm. from your parents. They so did this, we did that. Well, well, did I remember that or was I told that? So, but I do remember. <laughs> I think I remember burning that foot. Still got a scar. Lived very poorly, but we didn't know the difference. Mom was always a housewife and mother. She had six kids in nine years. She had five of those in six years. So she was darn busy just raising kids, and she died terribly young. Mom made all the girls' stuff. I don't ever recall her making us a shirt. She probably did, but uh, all the girls, she made their clothes, but not ours. She patched them. We wore holes in them. And, Today it would be in style, but back then they, they put patches on them. Made you look even poorer. <laughs> Didn't hurt you any. Dad did sharecropping, uh, we milked cows, we sold hogs, eggs, cream. Just just tried to survive. Just tried to get by. And and everybody in this old country was the same. They they, they just uh, had their own chickens and hogs and food and raised gardens and truck patches and they did the best they could do and it was before any welfare fair or federal assistance of, you know and then he worked uh, at school as a janitor and he worked state park he used to go to uh, I think it was a race scene Wisconsin to Libby's Foods and work summers worked in a boiler or a cooker or something of that nature and, and he'd go out there and make pretty good money and he'd always bring back an old car. And they were slick old cars. Like uh, he brought a uh, 31 Model A sedan and he had no more to get home with thing. They, they looked like they were brand new. They were all black and, and he'd sell them. He wouldn't keep them no time. He had two boys and he wasn't gonna have a car for them to tear up. So, uh, he brought several old cars back. I remember the 31 model and I remember a 36 model Ford. They were all sedans and a 39 model Ford. He bought an old truck one time and uh, it was an old 40 model Ford flatbed and, and he went to Wisconsin and left it. And I ran around town and old things some, but uh, I didn't have a driver's license. I was 17 because there wasn't nothing to drive anyway, so wasn't no hurry. But, but I drove to Wichita and back without a driver's license. Some cousin, some crazy cousin come through and I'm driving with no driver's license with his family. And they had little kids from one to five, I guess, you know, but wasn't too smart, but that's how I learned to drive. Two lane road, Wichita, Kansas. Well, I can re recall uh, gas at 19 cents a gallon is a gas war, but uh, God, I think it's pretty common, 25 cents, somewhere in that neighborhood. That was in the early 50s. I had a 1942 model Dodge, $150 on the credit. I flew it drive, four door, big old car. Drove to California and back. World War II was over in 1945 and, and mom's brothers came home to service and um, I started chopping cotton. I was nine years old and um, uh, they paid 15 cents an hour, 10 hour days. And, and uh, they paid uh, 30 cents an hour, $3 a day. And, but the little kids, they, they let two kids on one row and they, they draw a dollar and a half a piece. 
So second year I chopped cotton, I was, I, I was making three dollars like dad. I worked my little butt off and got with it, but that, that was my first playing job. I went to the wheat harvest when I was a junior in high school, 16 years old, and, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the breaking the ground. I enjoyed uh, hauling the wheat and the hay, and I, I really enjoyed it. 15 cents an hour. The old timers used to talk about barking for 50 cents a day, uh, but they were old, I thought, but uh, I'm not young, but, but 15 cents. <laughs> Good Lord, that's a dollar and a half for 10 hours of work, so. But you bought your own clothes and your own shoes, and you know. Well, never paid any mind to it. We, we just had to get a couple pair of overalls to go to, the, you know, go to school. We, we wore long handle underwear because uh, there was no central heat in the air. I mean, you used an old wood stove to heat with, and uh, the winters used to seem to be a little cooler. Summer seemed to be a little hotter. I suppose it's because you didn't have heat and air. We wore those old clothes by gully till they, you know, mom put uh, patches on patches and we wore them out. We got our money's worth. And the shoes were definitely worn out. In the summertime we went barefooted. Downtown there was an old drugstore. It was uh, belonged, uh, owned by Bill Brockman and, and he had a little old soda fountain in there. And, and this lady, uh, cooked hamburgers and and I was probably uh, 13 14 years old and before I got my first hamburger and um, got potato chips with that and oh man that was some good stuff probably 15 cents I don't recall but I shined shoes just right there in the barbershop real close and uh, I'd run down and grab me a hamburger and some potato chips and I think they had fountain coats I'm pretty sure they did but uh, they, they, a fountain coke probably cost you a dime, but Paul Pop was, was a nickel, so you know. It went to six cents after Shirley and I were married, and that was after 1955. And why they just raised a penny, I, I don't have a clue, because, man, first thing you know, it's a quarter, you know. And now you stop at a fast food and it's two bucks. Shirley Blevins, Shirley Ann Blevins, had a twin named Burley Nan, and I couldn't tell them apart. We got slapped on the, on the bus, that blind of it. But when they were in school, I, I couldn't tell one from the other. But Furley married before Shirley and you know left her by herself, so I didn't have to worry about kissing the wrong one. We didn't have money to share much on, on Christmas. So we was thrilled to get anything at all, and most likely we'd get more. At, at, in school, you'd draw names. And probably we're limited probably to spend 50 cents uh, you know, on a gift. and. We used to real death get a pocket knife or a pair of socks or just anything at all. We just, uh, I remember when uh, I was real small, we'd go out in the woods and cut an old cedar tree, a little one, and there was wild berries out there, these little red balls, and, and, and mom would have us running a, a needle and thread through them things and you'd make necklaces and whatever to hang all over the tree and uh, crepe paper and stuff like that, you know, decorate. But, we weren't any for giving gifts and being extravagant. That didn't happen. It just didn't happen. The world's just different than it was 70 years ago. Uh, all the kids get too much and, and don't appreciate it, and they'll play with the toy uh, 10 minutes, and first thing you know, it's junk, and it's in the garage sale or in the trash. And I, I imagine the best Christmas present I got was probably a $2 pocket knife. You know, it just... Nobody had money to spur, uh, splurge on him. But you couldn't believe too much in Santa because you'd have grown up thinking, well, I'm not, why am I, I'm good, why come I'm not getting anything? You know, you, you, there was more reality to being poor and not getting anything. You just, you know, you, you took what you got and be happy and go on with it. So, didn't matter, Santa just didn't make a whole lot of, no, not much. Yeah, but it was an old house built back in statehood sit on uh, native rocks on the corner, and, you know, wood floor, had uh, wood shingles on the roof. Never had a, a lick of paint on it. Never had a speck of paint. Until 1950, uh, we didn't have any running water or 
bathroom facilities, anything like that, was outdoor. John had a whale bucket, and parents or whomever, they just uh, dug a deep hole. Some of the modern places had what they call a two-holer. Two people would go in there and sit down, there was just a hole where you set your butt to grab. And that was, most of them was one-holer. <laughs> most of your cleaning material was a Sears catalog. They used to make the joke of using corn cobs. You'd use a white one and a red one. Uh, you'd use a red one and then you'd use a white one to see if you needed another red one. But I, I never did use corn cob or, or leaves too much, but when you're out in the woods, you pretty well do what you got to do. No heat, no air, four rooms, living room, and a kitchen, and one of them was more like a back porch or a screened-in back porch and then one bedroom. Uh, the old house was built, gosh, it was probably 40 feet long, and it was probably 30 feet front to back, but it was built on a uh, gable roof with a shed on the back. And the kitchen and the, and the little wood room or the what was my bedroom was on the back, just just a just a porch like. And we had front porch on on the on the front of that, so that's what the old house looked like. As the last one that I lived in, that had the water heated it with a coal stove, and we moved to Vi the city of Vianna in uh, 1950, and, and we didn't have hot water. We had a kitchen sink with water, but no bathtub, no bathroom. Still had the outhouse. Uh, when Shirley and I were married, I suppose we rented a house that had uh, probably had gas, cook stove, didn't have a w w washer or dryer. When we lived in the country, we, we uh, for years, in fact, I'm not even sure we got electric lights before we moved to town. We may have, but in those days there was an ice delivery man and, and you had an old wooden ice box you know, it would, it would keep ice, keep stuff cool, but but most of the time on, and we drank milk, we didn't do a lot of tea unless it's sassafras or something like that, but the milk that they would uh, take a gallon jug or a half gallon jug and, and, and wrap a toe sack around it and drop it down in the well, cool it. I went 12 years by in high school, by in elementary all the way through. Didn't study too hard, but uh, hard enough to get by. And I had a mean old woman when I was in seventh grade, but, but I dearly loved her and, and she taught me. And her name was Viola Peck. I was just a whole lot of teacher's pets. I just, I just got by with murder. I sure did, they let me do. I'd go to the boiler room and smoke. Uh, I'd get the girls to do my homework. I'd just, <laughs> I'd be yes sir, I had fun. Gordon Holder, Bill Thompson, I had lots of friends. Arnold Lawson, Carter Duval, Bill Codner. Uh, ran more with a class ahead of me than I did my own class, but uh, we were just all buddies, and that's just all there was to it. Well, we rode bikes, we, we went to the uh, swimming hole, Vianne Creek. We used to roll a, a tire, like a car tire, and we called them casings. This is my casing. We didn't hunt or fish, I didn't in my crowd. Just raise cane for, you know, country boys. Go down to the, to the local little old uh, coffee shop. Venables had one. We'd break in the gym and play basketball. My crate had a outside goal and a good dirt court and we'd run over there and play. Didn't fight much, just had fun. It was school activities. This is about the only places that, you know, we didn't have an uh, automobile, and uh, some of my friends did, and uh, we would occasionally go to South Salt to a movie or something like that, or out with the girls, or steal some watermelons, or do a few foolish things, you know, but we wasn't criminal. Well, we were just out having fun, go skinny dipping, whatever. Probably went to Fort Smith to a movie once or twice, uh, and that would be on a date or something like that. Oh, great, seventh, eighth grade? More like seventh? A little girlfriend I had, I ran with her twin brothers, and, and uh, she chewed bubble gum. But, but we'd go to the Joy Theater, and we'd both get in, and it cost us 20 cents, and sit away in the back and smooch. Just where the guys would just, hey, just cruise the street, you know. Go to one end of the town to the other, and, and, and sling a hooker and go back, and just burning gas. Killing time, really. I, I love basketball. Went out for football, but I was just a punching bag, too little. But, but I enjoyed it, and uh, baseball kind of scared me. We had old kids that could pitch, and uh, 
I kind of backed off on that, didn't much, you know, it's too hard. Um, like, do you have a favorite quote or a favorite saying? Yeah, but it's not nice. I say, we're all messed up, some of us worse than others. Mm -hmm. And that's not really the word I use, but we're all messed up. If you could give me advice on um, childhood, what would you say? Uh, respect your parents and uh, study hard in school. Don't waste your time. Uh, what kind of advice would you give me on money and finances? Save. Save all you can. Don't be a spendthrift and don't uh, get yourself so covered in debt that you're stressed or it, it becomes a problem in your marriage and when you first take off and not making much money, it is difficult. Uh, just, just be careful what you buy and, and it, it, anymore, and that started in probably the uh, mid-50s after World War II. If you didn't have the money, you bought it on a credit. First thing you know, you had furniture payments, TV payment, car payment, and house payment, and you had more doggone payments than you could make. So you didn't have much left to live on. Made the movies short. So, so uh, live on what you make and take care of it. Um, what about advice on love and friendships? Well, love's a two-way street, and just be faithful and uh, give it your best shot. Um, what kind of advice would you give me for family? Well, it's to each his own, but y you need to have children to to have grandchildren. So you don't have to have a house full. Back in the old days, they God, there's old families on this hill. There were 17 in one family and 13 in another. <laughs> they had a lot of kids to uh, help feed the families. You know, everybody worked in the fields or do this, that, and the other just to just to survive. But God, that's 70 years ago, so it's different. Just, just you don't need five or six. It's, it costs too much. One or two, or like two, don't have it. Don't stop with one. What would one thing that you could tell me to make sure that I know that anybody who watches this knows about your life? Hmm, I don't know that. That's a hard question. Uh, work hard and love others and, and believe in God. Give it your best shot. This is the last question. Is there anything that you would do differently in your life? I'm sure there is, but I wouldn't uh, admit to it, you know, or tell you what it was, but I'm sure, yeah, I'd do, I'd do some things differently, but I'd invest more and, and, and try to save, save more money and do it a little different. And when you're young, you want a new car every year, and first thing you know, that, that don't mean anything, drive them things till they wear out. Then buy you another one. But you used to, a lot of people do. They, a lot of people, the world's full of people that's got lots of money. But it's fuller of those that don't have any. So just, just be careful and give it your best shot. Go for it. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me so darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand, stand by me, stand by me. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain 
just as long as you stand, stand by me. 